We want to give an update to a story that we covered back in 2018. Now you have this white supremacist by the name of Gregory Bush. Now originally he went to a black church, but the church doors were locked because he wanted to pull a Dylan Roof uh, part two. Well, he could not get inside of a black church, so he ended up going to a Kroger um, out there in Kentucky. And then when he got there to the Kroger, um, he started to pull out his gun and he ended up killing Vicki Jones, who was 67 years old, and Marie Stallard, 69 years old, at the Jefferson Town Kroger on October 24th, 2018. Now, he shot the brother in the back of the head it said, as he was shopping for school supplies you know, with his grandson. Uh, he continued to shoot uh, the brother multiple times while he was laying on the floor. As he was leaving the store, um, he turned the gun on the sister who bled to death in the parking lot. Um, now, the only reason he was stopped, there was a brother that, you know, had his um, concealed carry and he, he practiced his Second Amendment rights. And he, what he ended up doing was neutralizing uh, the white supremacist threat. That's the only reason that he was stopped, because the cops didn't come there and stop him. Actually, the brother stopped him. But, you know, any time that a brother's a hero like that, um, they don't want to give a black man credit uh, for stopping a white supremacist terrorist. And that's exactly what he was at the time period. So he's recently had been sentenced to um, life without the possibility of parole, and he still faced federal gun charges and hate crime charges. So in addition uh, to the murder charges, um, he also faced an, another charge of attempted murder and wanton endangerment. So William Barr at the time said that he wasn't going for the death penalty um, in that federal case. Now, he had also played that, um, you know, he was crazy. And so now they got to give him, um, you know, drugs and everything because he's even diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, but he was really competent to stand trial. And the reason why I say he played crazy is because I'm, I'm just calling it like the old school people would say they use that as a strategy. So they don't have to be held accountable for what they do. Say, Hey, I was crazy. You know, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, you did. You knew exactly what you was doing. You woke up that morning, you decided, Hey, I want to go kill some black people. You loaded your gun up, you went in your car, you tried to go in the church, couldn't do that. So, man, I couldn't kill you black people. Let me go to, well, to a grocery store. I know some black people be over there. It was all premeditated murder. That's, that's all it was. And you, nothing was wrong with you that day. That's why I don't like the so-called mental ill defense when it comes to people who uh, premeditated kill people because there are people who go to a doctor who actually really have some mental ill issues, right? And they don't kill people at all. They haven't hurt anybody. So to, to sit up there and use that defense, something wrong with me. No, uh, uh, that's just a way for, for you not to be held accountable and not to talk about your violence, you know, because you want to lie uh, and have, have propaganda against black people, especially black men in particular saying, oh, black men are violent. Ain't nobody more violent than that Mzungu. Ain't nobody got the bodies piled up to the heavens and innocent blood running like a river uh, before God, uh, like that Mzungu, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And, and you want, and you wonder why, you know, and I was reminded of something that I said two years ago, you wonder why you're dealing with a, a pestilence right now. You wonder why it's the way y'all handling it is end up like a plague. You wonder why I'm just saying, you know, you can't keep doing the things you've been doing and thinking that it's not, not going to be any recompense for it before uh, God himself. But the family of, of this brother and sister also has a uh, Missouri Kroger because they said Kroger allowed people to come on their property and inside their store with guns. And yes, when you allow that, you will be held liable. I, personally, I would never allow people to be walking around with no guns in any place of mine. It's just not happening. I believe in the Second Amendment, but I, I don't want it in my business. If anybody's going to have a, a, some protection, it's going to be security that we have, armed security, because you just open yourself up to things like that and lawsuits. You know, let people just walk around in your business like that. Um, now, most you know, businesses here in Texas, even though we have concealed carry and open carry, they have signs out that say you can't walk in, the, you can't go in the stores with that, you know? And like I said, that's just to protect you <laughs> and your business from, from getting sued to oblivion. You understand? But leave me a comment. Let me know thing about the situation, you know, with this particular white supremacist, he got, you know, life without the possibility of parole. Me personally, I think he needed a death penalty. And, and I'm a firm believer of, you know, if, if we enacted our laws a little bit more for an eye for an eye, and swift death penalty like they do in a lot of other countries, 
Like you kill two people like that, you duly convicted. They got you dead to rights. Like I said within 60 days, you need to go, you know, um, file, file your appeal and all that, you know what I'm saying? But when it's dead to rights like that, I mean, they literally got you. It's not no, oh, he did it and you had no footage, you had no nothing. No, I don't think it should be swift like that. But when it comes to stories like this, it should be a swift death penalty case.